This is the uh, Bainbridge Island Senior Community Center Something to Talk About program. And uh, these programs on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday are available on Zoom and on YouTube at youtube.com slash BI Senior Center. They're sponsored by Fieldstone Communities of Bainbridge Island, which offers memory care and independent, and independent living. And they're opening assisted living as well up on their beautiful campus on Rolling Bay. A call to get a tour or to learn more. The phone number is 360-594-1010. We're going to be talking about all the happenings at the Bainbridge Performing Arts today, but I would like to start the program by acknowledging that we are gathering on the ancestral homeland of the Suquamish people, the people of the clear salt water, who have been uh, husbanding and uh, wifing the wonderful Salish Sea and surrounding islands and lands since time immemorial. We honor them and we are grateful for their hospitality. Joining us today, Dominique Cantwell, who has been the executive director at BPA for 23 years, I think. <laughs> 13. 13. It, it just feels like 23 in, uh, <laughs> in <laughs> lifetimes, I guess. Anyway, uh, 13 years. And uh, Elizabeth Allum, who is going to be taking over that after serving uh, as the exec as the uh, education director. I want to thank you both for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Pleasure. So, Dominique, I might start with you just um, as you look back at, I'll put it this way, more than a decade of uh, being the uh, executive director and managing the day to day operations of um, BPA, which has grown enormously and is continuing to blossom. Uh, any reflections on the trip? It's been such a privilege in every way uh, to get to hold people's stories and facilitate the kinds of dialogue and connection um, that we that we continue to do at BPA really has been enormously special. Um, both to me and to, I think, that the island's um, cultural evolution as well. Yeah, I know that, uh, I guess that BPA started out many, many years ago as a Bainbridge Light Opera and uh, and operated um, with uh, on a shoestring. And although the shoestring probably is longer, it's still a shoestring as you try uh -huh. to stretch the dollars to make stuff work. Uh, um, very much so. It's yeah, 67 years into this endeavor. It's still very much a, a community organization. The, the staff is actually really tiny. Um, you know, this is really entirely a reflection of what volunteers put into it. The community really gets out of it. I, pretty incredible to get to peek behind the curtain. And so even though we have a brand new, beautiful curtain to peek behind, um, actually, that's not true. <laughs> that shoestring meant that we saved the same beautiful curtain. Um, <laughs> but the metaphor translates. It translates. Um, yeah, when you peek behind it, it, it really is based on the talents and generosity um, of the members of this community. It's, it's really extraordinary. And there are a lot of programs, a lot of activities, a lot of things that go on through BPA that people might not recognize are all supported by that community institution. Uh, I know you have uh, theater schools and uh, the symphony works with you and- The symphony um, is part of us, it's part of us. And, uh, and other, other things that we might wanna mention here? We have, so there's there's various different things housed under the umbrella of, of the organization. You're right that BSO is one of them. Um, Bainbridge Symphony Orchestra, that is. Um, Theatre School is another that you mentioned. We also have um, The Edge, The Edge uh, Improv Group, who have been um, with us for years. One of the founder members was Frank Buxton, who is the namesake of the building, um, who's a, a, a community member who's very, very dear to the heart of BPA. Um, and of course, our main stage productions, which, um, we're very, very excited to be getting back on the actual main stage this year. Yes, you've had quite a journey through um, looking for other locations. You had an enormous amount of effort 
and success in uh, using working with the uh, uh, folks at the pavilion to use theater space there. And I know the the edge is at uh, um, Hila. But there's so, some other, they've been at Hila, yeah. And it it's it's times like this that make you really realize how what a connected and supportive community we are amongst. A huge shout out has to be made to the people at the pavilion. All of them um, were so wonderful to to collaborate with over the last year. Or how long has it been, Dominique, that we've been that we've been hiding out in this almost space? almost two years now. But yeah. Um, John Eisenhower, Jeffrey, like all the Jeffs at the pavilion, um, you know, our neighbors at the office expats, like it really, as Elizabeth said, just such a demonstration of the best of community. Yes, the combination of trying to um, do, I mean, it, it's a remodel, but it's a lot more than a remodel of uh, of the old BPA. And of course, coming out of the challenges of COVID, it's been it's been quite a path for everybody, but I think particularly for live theater, you tried doing some things uh, online. Uh, that was that was a pivot, as they said. But you had great turnout for great engagement by a lot of your uh, actors and directors for those projects too. So can you tell I think us? Last time, oh, go ahead. Oh, go, no, you go ahead. Okay, I, 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 I think last time, last time I visited you in the digital space, that's what we were talking about. Everybody's hair was kind of long. It was the early days of COVID, and uh, yeah, we were figuring out a, a new way of of storytelling. And it's it you know it got us through, but um, but it's not quite the same as uh, in person live theater. Yeah, it's a, a really it's a difficult, difficult craft to translate into the into the digital sphere, um, and we're very, very happy to be back in person. Um, all of the all of the different things that we do. I mean, I think having that in person time taken away from us made us realize how important connection is to our work, to the work that we do, to the craft of theater, and to the the essence of theater. It's about gathering people and sharing in an experience and then moving on transformed. Um, and that's really hard to do on Zoom. Although, you know, maybe this. <laughs> well, I, I mean, we keep trying. It's one of the, you know, you know, it's like it's not radio, but radio is something too. Um, so, Elizabeth, could you give us a little introduction to yourself as you, uh, um, have been here working and what you're uh, what you're looking forward to and sort of uh, for folks who might not know you. Yeah, and I'm sure there are plenty of folks who don't know me because I'm relatively new to the island. Um, I moved here about a year and a half ago with my young family. Um, I'm from the UK originally um, and Bainbridge Island called to us and it was it was organizations like BPA and BEMA that made us realize that Bainbridge Island is the kind of place that we want to call home. Um, what really, really stands out when you're when you're a newcomer to the island is that incredible things happen here entirely because people in the community come together and make them happen. Um, and I'm so, so forever grateful that we've found this place and forever grateful that we've made this place our home. And I'm forever grateful that I have found such an incredible creative community and become a part of that community. Um, I, I said to Dominique recently, I think BPA has completely stolen my heart. Um, I often refer to them as my family. Um, I'm the director of education at the moment, so I have the privilege of working with all of the young the young students that we have, and they they are the ones that have stolen my heart the most. Um, yeah. Uh, and to, I don't wanna talk just about myself when I talk about the future. At this present moment, Dominique and I are sort of, I'm shadowing her, we're sort of transitioning, preparing for her departure in October and preparing for me to, 
take the <laughs> take the torch and no one in my entire career has made me feel as ready and empowered as Dominique has she has been an incredible mentor the most inspiring person to to be taking a torch from um big pair of shoes to fill and I'm very very grateful to have the opportunity to learn from the person who walked in those shoes for so many years um this is an amazing community this and it probably a, has some peculiarities yeah yeah there's, <laughs> for sure for sure um you know there are everything like this comes with its challenges um but I think that we always, you know, this community and, and BPA, we have a really amazing way of facing challenges as a team, collectively. Um, and there's so much strength in that. That's what that's what theatre making is. It's it's never a solo pursuit. Never. Mm -hmm. Always, always a community effort. And that's why I think community theatre is often the most powerful type of theatre, because it 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 really is making theater for a community with the community and because of a community, all of the things that we do would not be possible if it weren't for the people who throw their hearts into it. It's, it's and I also feel like one of the wonderful things about BPA and the benefit we have of being so close to Seattle is that you can give a, a cast, a, a director, a team, uh, the opportunity to work with people who are um, working as uh, professional actors, but they're in concert with these um, uh, volunteers who are then stretched and grow in the opportunity to work with uh, great teams. And there's absolutely some tremendous productions I've enjoyed from BP. Yeah, and I think that's 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 a really special thing that that happens here we work with all volunteer casts um, and professional crews so volunteer actors and performers get the opportunity to work with professional directors professional musical directors and that is such an incredible opportunity for growth and learning and um it's 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 incredible to be a part of and it's a delight to enjoy as a audience member so um, tell us a little bit about what we can expect when we can uh, start to uh, see the new space. Um, my goodness, we're cooking up a lot. <laughs> um, to kick us off, we are having a big grand opening uh, ceremony celebration on September 30th at the Buxton Center. Um, which is in the same location as the previous theatre, the Playhouse. Um, it, it's been completely remodeled and renovated. Dominique can probably speak a lot more in detail about the, the specifics of the, the renovation, um, but it's been made bigger, brighter, better, more accessible, more envi environmentally friendly. It's, a, in, it's an impressively beautiful community space it really really is and we are cutting the ribbon on that space September 30th um people will start to gather around 5 30 and everybody is welcome we're going to have um community partners um in the space all contributing to the event and um the wonderful marimba band Anzanga are going to be playing and filling our filling our 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 space to the rafters with their incredible energy um, so that's September 30th. That's that's kind of how we're we're kicking off. And then we um we open our main stage season um in October. October 13th, we open the prom, which is our first main stage production. Um, and then our winter show is Beauty and the Beast, which runs November through December. Um, something for the family there. Uh, we have Book of Will and Cabaret in the spring. Um, and then we wrap up this main stage season up at Blodell as ever in the summer at the beautiful Blodell with Midsummer Night's Dream, um, which I'm particularly excited about. Um, and of course, The Edge, as I mentioned, we have Edge Improv. They they are one of the wonderful things that, that are housed under our umbrella. Um, they perform every Saturday, every first Saturday of the month 
and their their October show is actually going to be the first public performance to take place in the Buxton Centre, which is very exciting. Um, uh, we have theatre school classes running all throughout the year, and we actually it's worth mentioning we don't just um, offer classes for young people; we offer adult classes as well. Um, it's a really wonderful way to get truly involved and connected with theatre and performing arts. Um, last, last season, we actually had a, um, a student in our um, improv class, imp in, introduction to improv class, who was, I think she was 93 years old, and she had never taken an acting class before in her life. And there she was, and she was amazing. <laughs> it was aspirational. Um, so yeah. Everyone's welcome at theatre school. Um, and we have a, an exciting year ahead for the symphony as well, for Bainbridge Symphony Orchestra. Um, we are conducting our search for the next musical director for BSO. And the three concerts that BSO will play this year will be led, will be um, conducted by the three candidates for that, for that position. Um, so a pretty unique, and exciting year for, for BSO is ahead of us in 23, 24. Um, and of course, we always have volunteering opportunities um, coming up in our organization. And this year in particular, you know, we, we're, we're expanding our operation, we're expanding everything we do. And um, volunteering is a really magical way to get involved in the action. Um, we have volunteering opportunities from set building, set painting, costume making, to ushering and helping out at the box office or running the bar. <laughs> There's all sorts of wonderful ways to get involved in, in theatre. Um, you know, this truly is a community theatre. And like you say, Reed, it, it wouldn't happen if it weren't for the people who come together to make it happen. Um, so yeah, that's everything that we have cooking and looking yeah, forward. Yeah, that's well, that's quite a that's quite a ride to hop onto, as you're. Sure is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Dominique, could you tell us a little bit about uh, some of the new uh, opportunities that are afforded by the space that uh, that the the Buxton Center, new arrangements of of uh, of the facility. One of the things that I think people are going to really get well acquainted with early on is our new studio space. In addition to everything that Elizabeth just talked about, we also have this beautiful new studio attached to the lobby um, that can be rehearsal space. It can be for rentals, for music, um, for meetings, for luncheons, like you name it. It is this really extraordinary, flexible community space that we can't wait to welcome people into. and. It's a perfect opportunity to really display some of the best of what our creative partners are working on. I know Elizabeth um, has been working with By Life Kits App um, to, to come in and do, can we share? Is it public? Is it? Yeah, 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 of course. Okay, okay. so um, um, an experiential version of The Wizard of Oz um, in uh, early November. We can have bands, all kinds of things. Like that's a really great way to, to interact with creativity and with community. But I mean, we've got this lobby that's finally gonna be big enough to accommodate all of the people that we have seats for. We have fewer seats actually in the main theater than we had before because there's finally leg room. Um, I'm five four, <laughs> I can barely cross my leg. So uh, I think that people are gonna really actually enjoy sitting in there for a couple of hours for a change. Um, but Throughout the building, everything, as Elizabeth said, has been remodeled, but it also was fortunate in a way that our timing paralleled with COVID because we took a whole new idea of how to create space uh, that are health, spaces that are healthy and hygienic. Um, and so we have a new plenum system and an HVAC system that's going to circulate air vertically instead of horizontally. So it's going to be constantly cycling up and out. It'll be quieter. Um, and we're also not going to be sharing one another's air. Um, and it's the same for, for backstage as well. So that as oh, we come back, great. we go into cold and flu season. Um, 
people can feel good about being in the space. That's amazing. Those are some big changes. And of course, we did <laughs> we did learn a lot about ventilation in the last three years. I'll tell you what. Um, <laughs> we're... Can I say one more thing, though, about oh, just access yeah. accessibility? Anybody who was at the, the shows previously may remember walking in on stage. That will never be the case again. We've <laughs> reoriented the house. So there's some lovely cross aisles now. You don't have to hop over 20 seats to, to get to your own. Um, and an elevator as well. So we have about twice as much accessible seating as we had before, plus entrance at the top of the house. And we have a new sensory access room that's going to make the experience enjoyable for patrons who have sensory needs and who may want to engage with performances in a different way. So we really hope that everyone in this community will feel welcome and that they can be a part of our performances. Oh, I, lo I look forward to learning more about that. But uh, I can assure you that those of us at the Bainbridge Island Senior Community Center appreciate accessibility as a <laughs> thing to think about. Many of our uh, members are regular attendees. And uh, so, and some of them were all riding onto the stage with their walkers in their wheelchairs. And now they'll have a, a better way to enjoy. And well, everybody they, else too. Yes, Elizabeth. If they do want to come onto the stage. They can, they're always welcome to audition. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, anything else you'd like to, to touch on? Um, uh, I think we've covered a lot of what's uh, in store. And boy, Elizabeth, welcome, welcome. We're very happy to have you here. And thank you, Dominique, for uh, your wonderful service to the community. Thank you. And one more exciting note. All of the building is going to be connected on hearing loop systems. So if you're not already set up, you can go to your audiologist and make sure that your uh, hearing aids are tuned so that you can tune on in to everything we've got going on in the building. That's wonderful. Yes. Uh, and it also, if if you go to that effort, you can enjoy that we have installed a hearing loop here in Huny Hall. Uh, and that T-coil will work here as well. And mm -hmm. it's uh, for people who have uh, been able to take advantage of it, it's definitely worth checking out because it makes an entire, it makes the experience much more enjoyable. You can follow every every word and activity. Okay, thank you both. I appreciate your time. Stay in touch. Thank you, Reed. Reed, thank you so much for having us.